Hi world, good morning. My name is Salma Edgar and I'm a Protestant Christian missionary. Just get situated here. Okay. Welcome to all of you out there who are in Periscope. I am married to Protestant Christian missionary Norman Edgar and we live in the United States and I have a little map here that Norman has made showing you where we are um, right in the middle of the United States in Missouri. We live uh, close to the city of St. Louis which is one of the major cities. Some of you are probably familiar with that. And the reason that I'm on Periscope it is to share with the world out there about the love of Jesus. Part Norman and I together are partners as Protestant Christian missionaries who want to share the love of God with the world and point to people, point everyone to Jesus as the only way of salvation. And I am here to answer questions that you might have as what it's like being the wife of a Protestant Christian missionary. And uh, hello, good morning, Jerome, welcome. My name is Salma Edker, I'm a Protestant Christian missionary married to Norman. We are on Periscope for the purpose for the purpose of telling the world about Jesus as the only way of salvation. And we just want you to know that God can help you in your life situations if you turn to him. And I welcome any questions that you might have as to what it's like being the wife of a Protestant Christian missionary, how that might be different from other wives, and what kind of things that I might have to deal with. Um, questions perhaps like, do I have to dress differently? Hello, welcome. Um, as a missionary, um, hello, everyone out there, welcome. I am on Periscope as a Protestant Christian missionary wife, together with my husband, Norman. What's my job? Um, hello, everyone. My job, um, as a, I have two jobs. My main purpose as a Protestant Christian missionary is to tell the world about Jesus as the only way of salvation. And then in the natural world, you might say, um, I work part-time in an eye doctor's office as a medical receptionist. Um, we, I was working part, I was working full-time. We got married three years ago and then I went to part-time and I work about 20 hours a week and uh, so that gives us some extra spending money which makes it really nice and also gives us some a little bit of separate time which is good for all marriages and uh, so you might um, even not might not even understand really what a Protestant Christian missionary is. Okay, what is your question? Yes, yes, we are Protestant. And that means that we believe only in the Protestant Christian Bible. What is the difference? Good question. Thank you for asking. The, the Protestant Christian Bible is our current English Bible, which was um, translated back in 1500 AD. And the difference between the Protestant Christian Bible and other Bibles is that it is the only divinely inspired Word of God. So we 
distinguish that from the other Bibles, such as the Roman Catholic Bible. They have added extra books to it. Hello, welcome. Um, my name is Selma Edgar, Protestant Christian Missionary. Thank you for joining in. And I was just answering a question. Someone asked, what's the difference in a Protestant and others? And Protestant Christians believe only in the Protestant Christian Bible, the English Bible. Other religions' Bibles have added stuff to them that is not from God, like the Jehovah Witnesses and the Mormons and the Catholics. Um, a lot of religions have additional books that have been written that they say explains what the Bible means. And those are lies. God doesn't need someone else to interpret what he wrote in another book. And those religions, what did they add, for example? Good question. Um, in the Catholic Bible, hello, David, welcome. In the Catholic Bible, they have, um, I don't remember, I think it's about four or five, maybe six extra chapters in there that, hi, Thank you, David. They have the apocryphal books, too. Yes. <laughs> I got to go to Home Depot. Okay. So, all right. <laughs> um, that, if, if, in case you saw that, that was my wonderful husband coming. He's get, getting ready to leave, so he came by and gave me a little smooch. <laughs> so I appreciate that. Uh, those extra books in the Roman Catholic Bible are called the Apocrypha. And they are not inspired from God. There's just a lot of extra nonsense in there. Hello, welcome. Um, so then there's a lot of religions that, uh, like I say, they've written extra books like the Scientologist, uh, Christian Science, Mormons, and they have... A leader that has written a book and those people that believe in that follow what those people tell them instead of what God said and so those are all demonic and um, so that's lies from the devil here's a list to go there and they've listed okay. on their website thank you my husband, Norman, just uh, gave me something to share with you that he has written out. Um, if you're really interested in knowing about these false religions, you can go to this website. It's called watchman.org, and it will list, hi, it will list all of the, the cults, and what they believe and that's what those religions are cults when they have a leader that you follow and do what they say and believe what they say instead of what God says in the Protestant Christian Bible so any religion I wonder if I could add something to that. okay my husband Norman's right here and he wants to share something with you too Okay, I guess we can get in here. Okay, oh. Okay, guys, look. We're she's sharing about different cults, right? Different things you can go look at. The deal, here's the deal when you become a Protestant Christian. Let me tell you. You are only responsible for what you read in the Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament truths of Jesus, the Apostle and Evangelist. You cannot believe what I write. Okay? You're only going to be judged on the words of Jesus. What you read and what you understand. And I'm not talking about some deep spiritual stuff. Forget this junk, you got to have a master's degree, a doctor's degree, speak Hebrew and Greek to understand what Jesus told these common fishermen. 
You can get it. And it's only that you're going to be judged by. You and Jesus, there's nobody else involved. It's quite simple when you say you love someone with all your mind, heart, and soul, and your neighbor. What do you think that means? Amen? I got to go to Home Depot. Bye. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jesus, let me turn this back a little bit here. Uh, Jesus was born in Bethlehem, and it tells us in the Protestant Christian Bible, to answer your question, that um, he did... Um, Joseph and Mary, his parents, did have to flee to Egypt with baby Jesus at one time because God warned them that um, Herod wanted to destroy baby Jesus. And so they fled to Egypt and they lived there for a time, but that's not where he was born. Hello, welcome Matthias. My name is Selma Edker. I'm a Protestant Christian missionary. And the reason I'm here on Periscope, uh, along with my husband, Norman, who's on every morning, is to tell the world about Jesus, to let you know that God loves you and that he wants you to turn to him. And you, through Jesus, through faith in Jesus, you can have eternal life. He is the only way. Welcome. Hello. Thank you for joining in. For everyone who's just joined, my name is Selma Etker. I'm a Protestant Christian missionary. Uh, my husband, Norman, and I live in the United States, in the state of Missouri, um, right in the center part of the United States. And we are on Periscope to share with you about Jesus being the only way of salvation. And... Yes, uh, that is true. They are Orthodox Christians. Hello, hamster. Hello, gorilla. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining in. My name is Selma Edker. I'm a Protestant Christian missionary, and I'm answering questions this morning. What is the difference? Um, an Orthodox Christian, uh, to the best of my knowledge, they believe in living by the law, which is, means that they think they have to work their way to heaven, that they have to be good enough to go to heaven. Hello, welcome. But there is no, nothing that you can do to earn your way into heaven. There is only one way. You can't be good enough. You can't do enough good, good works, but you have to have faith in Jesus Christ alone as the Savior. And God, if when a person is sincere about wanting to know the truth about God and about heaven, about salvation, God's grace will reach out to you. God's grace is his love and his favor towards you and his power to help you. But if you are a Christian and not a good person, um, there are many, 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 many people. Hello, Golden, welcome. Many people who say they are Christians, but in reality, they're not. Thank you for joining in, Golden. My name's Selma Edker. I'm a Protestant Christian missionary, and I'm answering questions this morning. Um, someone just, oh, thank you very much. Someone just asked a question about if you're a Christian but not a good person. When you are a true Christian, that means that you have been spiritually born again. And when that happens, the Holy Spirit of God transforms you on the inside and you are a follower of Jesus. There's, like I say, there's many, many people who say they're Christians, but it's just a title for them because they've not been born again. 
they think they're Christians just because they're going to church or because they read the Bible or because their parents took them to church. Or maybe they think they're a Christian because they're not a Hindu or they're not a uh, not something else. They're not a Muslim. So by default, they think they're a Christian. But to be a Christian means to be a follower of Jesus. Hello, Dylan. Welcome. Um, I don't know how to answer that. Um, so, to be a Christian is to become spiritually born again. And that means that you want to turn to God through faith in Jesus Christ. And the reason this is necessary is because of original sin. Original sin means the first sin that was ever committed and that happened by Adam and Eve, the first people. And the Protestant Christian Bible tells us about that. Do Christians follow the Old Testament? No, the Old Testament is a history of the beginning of the world, of God's creation, of the first people that are created, that God created everything that exists today. It tells about the history of the Jewish people and everything that happened up until Jesus came to earth to be our Savior. So the Old Testament is called the law, and that is not for today's Christians. Jesus, when Jesus came, now we are to follow only his teachings in the New Testament, the writings of Jesus and his apostles and the evangelists, the whole New Testament. That is to be our rules and guide for today's living. So because of the original sin in the Garden of Eden, that sin was then... Yes, it is true that's written in the Old Testament. But again, that is the Old Testament. When the New Testament was written, the Old Testament was no longer valid for today. And it says in the New Testament that we can eat all things. God says all foods are sanctified now for Christians to eat. We don't live by the Old Testament law anymore. It's good to read it. We need to read it so we understand the history, but it doesn't apply to our everyday lives today. Welcome, those of you who are just joining in. My name is Selma Etker. I'm a Protestant Christian missionary, and I'm here to talk with you about Jesus and to answer questions that you have. And so I was explaining well, it is true that we shouldn't eat just a whole lot of pork. I, you have a good point there. Uh, but it's not going to hurt to eat some pork. As I said, God, is, God has sanctified all foods, but we need to keep it in balance what we eat. And there are a lot of people who just eat way too much meat, I believe. We need to to eat lots of fruits and vegetables and everything that God has made. We need to have a balanced diet and not to eat so much that we become overweight. I think that it's important that we do take care of our health by eating properly. Because of the original sin by Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, that sin nature was then passed on to all people. I'm not even going to answer that question. And so, you mean what is unhealthy? Are you talking about the pork? Okay. Well, you know, it's fine if you don't want to eat the pork. That's, you know, that's your decision. I'm not going to tell you that you should eat it. 
I'm just saying that in God's eyes, it's okay for a person to eat pork. Hello, welcome, Patrick. Thank you for joining. My name is Selma Edker. I'm a Protestant Christian missionary, and we're just having a, a good conversation this morning talking about the Bible. Hello, welcome. And um, about Jesus is the only way of salvation. Do Christians only believe in Jesus? Yes. Jesus is the only way of salvation. And I was just explaining that because of the sin nature that has been passed on to everyone from the original sin caused by Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, what about the other prophets? Are you talking about in the Old Testament? Hello, welcome to everyone who's joining in. The other prophets that are talked about in the Protestant Christian Bible were used by God to tell the people about him. Thank you. Moses, Abraham. Uh, Moses and Abraham, yes, they were used by God to do his will. Muhammad is not anyone that I believe in as a Christian. A lot of people say that Jesus is just a prophet, but that's not true. Jesus is the divine Son of God. No one else is in the same category with Jesus. The, the Protestant Christian Bible says, God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son, and that is Jesus so that the world through him might be saved. Yes, Jesus is the Son of God. And it says in that verse, God so loved the world. That means everyone in the world that through faith in Jesus, they might be saved. Not through anyone else, but only through faith in Jesus. And so, yes, I, I understand that. I know that is true. But he, he is n not just a prophet. He is the Son of God. That is different than being just a prophet. Jesus is going to return one day, yes. But when... But when he returns, then the rapture is going to take place. All the people who are spiritually born again will be raptured up to heaven. And all the people who have rejected Jesus as Lord and Savior, well, that is a lie. That is a lie. And so, I am a Protestant. Jesus alone is the only way to heaven. Muhammad can't save you. Allah can't save you. Buddha can't save you. Nobody else can save you. Hello, welcome. Jesus alone. Yes, I know that's true, but Allah is not the same God. Yes, it's just a word. Allah is not the God who created the world. He is not the God in the Protestant Christian Bible. There is only one true God. Hello, welcome. I appreciate everyone that's listening today, and I hope that you will... Well, if they say Allah, then they are not spiritually born-again believers. To be spiritually born-again... You have to believe by faith that Jesus is the divine Son of God, that he died on the cross, he suffered unbearable agony, and he did it because he loves everyone. He willingly died on the cross because God required a sacrifice as a penalty for the sin of all people. 
Everyone is born with a sin nature. That means we are sinners. And that's why we have to be spiritually born again. We're, when we are born as a baby, we are born with that sin nature that was passed on to us from Adam and Eve because of that original sin. Hello, welcome. Thank you for listening. My name is Selma Edgar. I'm a Protestant Christian missionary. Yes, the atonement has already been accomplished by Jesus. Thank you for the hearts. Hello, welcome to everyone. That is a lie. Jesus is the Son of God. And the only thing that will send a person to heaven or to hell is rejecting Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And so when you open up your heart to God, His grace will help you to understand if you're sincere. Hello, Russia. Welcome. And so if you ask God to help you to understand, He will. That's His grace, His love. Yes, Jesus is the Son of the only God. And so, he died on the cross to pay the penalty for our sins. God required a blood sacrifice to pay for our sins. In the Old Testament of the Protestant Christian Bible, all through that time of history, the people had to make blood sacrifices, and that was with animals. They sacrificed bulls and goats and calves and lambs, all kinds of sacrifices. And that was for the Old Testament time until Jesus came. And now Jesus paid that penalty one time. In the Old Testament, they had to sacrifice every day. They had to sacrifice animals. But now, since Jesus died on the cross, then he paid that penalty, and it never has to be paid again because of God's great love. He doesn't, God doesn't want us to have to suffer. He doesn't want us, amen indeed. He doesn't want us to have to be punished for our sin because Jesus went to the cross and he paid that penalty. So it's through faith in what Jesus did. His precious blood atoned for our sins, for everyone that lives now and for everyone that will ever live. Jesus paid that penalty. And so when we turn to Jesus, when we accept what he did and turn to God and say, God, I am so sorry for my sins. Please forgive me. And by faith, and believing what Jesus did, then we are justified. We are justified by what Jesus did. Hello to you, all of you. Welcome. Thank you for joining in. My name is Selma Edgar, for those of you who just came on. And I'm a Protestant Christian missionary. And we're just having a lively discussion here this morning about Jesus being the only way of salvation. That's right. You do have to you do have to humble yourself before God. And God is so loving that he will forgive you completely when you sincerely say to him God, I'm sorry. Yes, Jesus is Lord. And that is called justification. When you turn to Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and God 
it's like God is saying, it's just as if you had never sinned because God sees you washed. Jesus' atoning blood is washed away your sin and God sees you in a new light because Jesus is the light. So, once you turn your heart to Jesus and decide that you want to believe in him as your Lord and Savior, then the next step is that you agree. Good, I'm glad you believe in Jesus. Then you have to agree also it's not going to do you any good to believe in Jesus and the other prophets because those other prophets cannot do anything for you. You have to trust only in Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And I, I'm really sad that many people will reject Jesus. Those, uh, no one else can save your soul and take you to heaven except Jesus. But once you make that decision, then you also have to decide that you will live by the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament teachings. And that, mean, and that is called repentance. Repentance is making a turn in your life. It's turning from the way you have lived before, just living. Hello, welcome. It means that you surrender your heart and your will to God, and you decide you're not going to be your own boss anymore. You're not going to live your life the way you've always lived it, but you're going to live it for God. And when you make that decision, the Holy Spirit of God comes into your heart and he transforms you. And then you want to please God. And it's easy to turn away from living your life just for yourself. When you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the Bible says you are then a new creation or a new creature in Christ Jesus. And your desires change, your heart changes, and you love God. And then you will want to obey the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament. Hello, welcome those of you who are just coming on. My name is Selma Edgar and I'm a Protestant Christian missionary. That means that I believe only in the Protestant Christian Bible and that Jesus is the only way of salvation. I really appreciate all of you who are on there listening to me. I am 68 years old and my husband Norman is 70. And, hello, welcome. And we are here in the United States. And I just, I love you all. And I'm so grateful that you would take time out of your day or your evening to listen. Uh, no, I don't. I know that probably most of you who are on Periscope out there are probably a lot younger than I am. And um, this is something that I never imagined I'd be doing. Hello, welcome. Holland, oh, wonderful. Thank you for joining in. It's just really exciting to me to see. Hello, welcome. Is it Fayo? It's really exciting to me 
that I can communicate with people all around the world. And it's just incredible. Israel, welcome. This is just, um, you were a Jew. Does that mean you're saying I was a Jew? Are you still a Jew? You're a Muslim now? Well, being a Muslim will not take you to heaven. The, Bible, the Protestant Christian Bible says the only way of salvation is through Jesus Christ. He alone is the Savior of the world. There is no other God that can do anything for you. Only through faith in Jesus Christ can you go to heaven. Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining in. My name is Selma Edker. I'm a Protestant Christian missionary in the United States. Well, you know, just having respect for prophets is not going to take you to heaven. Do you not think you feel good? Okay, how do you think you're going to feel when you end up in hell? That's a very serious question. Well, the Protestant Christian Bible is the only inspired word of God, the true and living God who created everyone. Because the Protestant Christian Bible says that Jesus is the only way to heaven. God sent Jesus. Yes, even for atheists. But you can't go to heaven. Hello, welcome. My name's Selma Edker. I'm a Protestant Christian missionary, and we're having a lively discussion this morning. I'm asking, answering questions. Um, Jesus died to pay the penalty for everyone's sins. It doesn't matter if you're an atheist, a Buddha, a Muslim, a, a Mormon, a Hindu, whatever you are. Jesus has already died to pay the penalty for everyone's sins. But... That doesn't mean you automatically go to heaven just because Jesus already did that. You will only go to heaven if you turn by faith to Jesus. Hello, welcome. You only can go to heaven if you turn by faith to Jesus and believe that he is the only way to heaven that he paid the penalty for your sins, that he is the true son of God, the only way to heaven. Jesus already died so that you don't have to die in your sin and go to hell. Hello, welcome. Okay, great. Thank you for coming back. God, the Bible says God does not want anyone to perish and that word perish means to go to hell whenever the bible says we are appointed once to die some people believe in reincarnation hello welcome but reincarnation do you know what yes i love all people because Jesus, the Son of God, lives in me. When I became spiritually born again at the age of 50, God transformed my heart. And that love of God is now in my heart for all people. And that's why I am here talking to you. 
That's the only reason. I'm not on here just so you can look at me. You've got better things to do than that. But but I am here because I want everyone who does not know about Jesus to learn about him. And my prayer is that you will listen and take it seriously and open up your heart and think about what I'm telling you. Yes, God is good. He is a loving God. Yes, and God loves all people. He loves everyone, no matter who you are. Hello, welcome. Is it Greg? Welcome, Greg. Well, let me answer. That's a good question. God does not throw people into hell, but God gives us free will. That means he allows everyone to choose what they want to believe. He allows everyone to choose whether to believe in Jesus as their Lord and Savior or to believe in some other false God. Yes, we do need peace. Hello, welcome. But there's not going to be peace. Hello. There will not be peace in the world because of Satan, the devil, and that's where all the evil comes from. Yes, you can ask me a question. That's right, God is not Satan. God is God, the loving God, the creator of the world. Satan is the devil. And Satan wants to take people to hell with him because that's where he is going to end up with. Only Satan wants people in hell, that's true. Okay, hello, welcome. Okay, I'm waiting for that person that I just got part of your statement or your question. I appreciate all of you who are out there listening. Hello, welcome. My name is Selma Edker. I'm a Protestant Christian missionary. Can I help you with a job? Are you needing to get a job? Are you having trouble on your job? Yes, my name is Selma, but it's S-E-L-M-A. Okay, could you please, you need a job. Okay, would you like for me to pray with you now? No, I'm not a Jew. Hello, welcome to everyone who is coming on. I just, uh, I'm waiting for an answer from my friend out there that says they need a job. And don't have a green card. So where are you? What country are you in? Okay, the person that says they need a job. You're in Kazakhstan. So are you saying that you are you are an illegal immigrant in Kazakhstan? You're from Russia? Hello. Okay. So, hello everyone. Welcome, welcome. So, this person that needs a job and you're saying you don't have a green card? You're illegal? Well, if you're in a country illegally and trying to get a job, 
okay, that I'm sorry, I there's nothing I can do for you. If you're not obeying the laws, then you need to do the right thing. And I know it's it's a hard thing not to have a job. Hello, welcome. And I, I have sympathy for you if if you're need, wanting to work. That's that's good. Everyone everyone should work to support themselves. But I believe in obeying the laws, and so there's nothing I can do to help you. You just need to do the right things. Hello, all of you out there. Thank you for the hearts. Thank you for listening. I really appreciate all of the comments and the questions this morning. And again, for those of you come to Holland, well, that's a nice thought. What right things? Okay, well, if I don't know what, exactly what your circumstances are, but if if I understand correctly, you are saying, um, I'll get back to your question in a minute about the Mexicans. Um, if you're saying that you are in Kazakhstan, you don't have a green card, you're a creative person, and okay, and so you're wanting to create some kind of a, a job that you can do. I don't know how to help you. I'm sorry. You need a job. In, it says, I need job in my, and I can't see the rest of it. Okay, I'm sorry I'm not following what you're saying. Welcome to everyone that's joining in. Okay, I see a lot of people coming on. And I'm some of it I'm not quite understanding what you're saying, but I really appreciate you joining in and listening to me. And I don't know if that comment is uh, if you're being sincere or if you're being sarcastic. But I can't help you if you're in a, a country illegally. I don't, I don't have any advice to give you. But my, my main purpose on being in Periscope, you're in Russia, welcome. Which city is beautiful? Well, that's, um, I guess, a little bit of a hard question for me to answer because I am not a city lover. Hello, welcome. Um, I grew up in the country on a farm, and I love the country more than the cities. You like the beach? Yes, beaches are very beautiful. You think Minnesota is, well... I've never been to Minnesota, Texas. Yeah, there are a lot of beautiful places in the United States, and I've seen some of them. You like the Wild West? <laughs> um, but the main purpose why I'm here on Periscope is to hopefully help you and to point you to Jesus as being the only Lord and Savior. And um, I'm just very happy that so many of you are taking the time to join in and listen to me. Hello, welcome. Um, but it's not about me. It's about Jesus. And my husband is Norman. We have been married three years with Protestant Christian missionaries in the United States. And hello, welcome. And my husband Norman is on Periscope every morning at nine o'clock. And this is his title. The 0900 is military time. It's 9 a.m. in the United States. 
and he is on to help anyone he wants to reach out to God in prayer and to tell the world about Jesus and how much Jesus loves you. And we have a website if you're interested. It's howtobecomeachristiantoday.com. That's all one word, howtobecomeachristiantoday.com. And on our website, you can read, no, we are not to follow laws in the Old Testament. That, hello, welcome. I know a lot of people who say they're Christians still think that they have to follow the laws in the Old Testament. But those laws are no longer valid since Jesus came. Hello, welcome, welcome to those of you who are joining in. Yes, the Jews do believe in the Old Testament, but that is not correct for today. Hi. Okay, I think you were on with Norman earlier this morning. Okay, yes, we uh, we enjoy Taylor. You know, we we talk talk about her. Uh, she's she's been on a lot with Norman, and so we think about her. Why has the Testament changed? That's a very good question. The Old Testament, the Old Testament, um, the whole Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament were inspired by God. The Old Testament is the history of God creating the world, creating the first people, the animals, everything that exists, God created, and then it tells about those first several hundred years of mankind, high, of mankind on the earth, but it was all pointing towards Jesus coming. Hello, welcome. The Old Testament is, it's like a history book, and then when the New Testament begins when Jesus was born because Jesus fulfilled the law. The Oh, thank you. I love you too. In the Old Testament, blood sacrifices were required for the sins of the people. But when Jesus came, those sacrifices were no longer needed because Jesus, hello, welcome, Jesus became the blood sacrifice one time for the sins of all people. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. We are not free to sin. When we become spiritually born again, we are set free from the sin nature that's inside us when we're born, that sin nature that causes us to sin until we turn to Jesus by faith and we become spiritually born again, then we do not have to sin anymore. No, just looking at girls is not a sin. That's a natural thing. But what becomes sin is when you look at girls with a lust, such a lust that you want to, you mentally undress them or you mentally... Uh, think about having sex with them. That becomes sin. Yes. <laughs> Hello, daughter or son. I can't tell who it is. No, that is not true. It is not true to say when we are not under the law, 
You have to become spiritually born again to be free. Thanks. You have to become spiritually born again to become free of sin. And when you're free from that sin nature and you turn to Jesus and live by the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament, you don't have to sin anymore. And we're not supposed to sin anymore. Now, that doesn't mean that we will never sin. Sometimes we might slip up and commit a sin but then all you have to do is repent and say to God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I did that. Please forgive me. And God will willingly forgive you. Hello, welcome. My name is Salma Edker. I'm a Protestant Christian missionary in the United States, along with my husband, Norman. We've been married three years, and... Uh, we are on Periscope just to share the love of Jesus and to let you know that God loves each one of you and that Jesus has already paid the penalty for your sins. And if you will turn to him by faith, believe that Jesus is the precious Son of God, does are you saying, did Norman make me a Christian? Is that what you're asking? Okay. No, Norman didn't make me a Christian. And no other person can make you a Christian. I was already a Christian. Okay, I'll try to speak slower, maybe. Is that what you need? Welcome to those of you who are just joining in. No other person can make someone a Christian. I, When Norman and I met, he was a Christian and I was a Christian. And we fell in love and we got married three years ago. And so together, we are telling the world about Jesus and his love. And it's because God loves you that he sent Jesus a long time ago to die for the sins, for your sins and my sins. Okay, sin, yes, that is true. Sin is being, the, I could say there's two definitions. Sin is doing anything that is wrong in God's eyes. It's doing anything that's not pleasing to God. And in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament, it teaches very clearly what is considered sin. But in a bigger sense, the only sin that will send a person to hell is rejecting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That's what God says in the Bible. If you reject Jesus, how do you repent? Okay, I'm glad you asked. That's a wonderful question. The way you repent is that you decide to believe hello welcome to repent is decide to decide that you believe that jesus died on the cross for your sins that his blood paid the penalty for the sins of the world that was what god required a blood sacrifice jesus died on the cross as that penalty, he did it willingly. No, we no longer have to follow the laws in the Old Testament. We have to obey the teachings in the New Testament. So when you believe, let me finish what I'm saying, and then I will answer that question about the gay people. And if I forget, please 
uh, ask me again. To repent means that you decide that you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior by faith and his atoning for your sins. You turn to God and you say, God, I'm sorry for my sins. And I believe that Jesus died for me. And I want Jesus to be my Lord and Savior. Hello, welcome. And it also means that you will agree to obey the teachings of Jesus and the apostles and evangelists in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament. You are... At that point, if you agree that you want to do that, you have to surrender your heart and your will to God and say, but repent means that you turn in a different direction. Hello, Greg, welcome. To repent is to turn to God and you say to God, I want to live for you now. I Accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I'm sorry for my sins. And I will obey Jesus. I will live for you, God. And I will obey what the New Testament says. And I will live by those teachings. And I will serve you, God. That is repentance. And when you make that decision, it is the most important decision that you will ever make. If you make that wonderful decision to repent and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then you can be assured that you will go to heaven when you die. But if you don't ever make that decision, if you choose to live your own way, if you choose to worship other gods, or if you choose not to worship any god at all, if you reject Jesus, then you will go to hell when you die. And then the, there was a person just asked me about, will gay people go to hell? Gay, being gay, you're welcome. Being gay or being homosexual, the Protestant Christian New Testament speaks very clearly about what a great sin God says it is. But just being gay does not send you to hell. Any gay person can turn to Jesus and repent. And they will go to heaven, just like anyone else. The only sin that actually sends you to hell is rejecting Jesus. And that is your free will choice. God does not want you to go to hell. Satan, the devil, is the one that wants you to go to hell because that's where he is going to end up. And he wants to take everyone to hell with him because he cannot go to heaven. But you have that choice. God loves you so much that he wants every one of you to turn to him, to choose Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And it cannot be simply a choice in your head to say, yeah, I think Jesus is God's son and I'll be a Christian. That is not being spiritually born again. That is not repenting. It cannot be simply head knowledge. It has to be in your heart. It has to be a sincere surrendering to God, surrendering your life and your will to God, 
and saying, God, I want to live for you. This, what I'm going to say next, is probably going to be shocking to some people. Everyone, everyone, every single person that ever lives has to repent in order to be spiritually born again. And you cannot go to heaven unless you are spiritually born again. And believe it or not, if Jesus is not your Savior, if God, the true and living God, the creator of the world, is not your God, then you are being controlled by Satan. Hello, welcome. And I know that's um, kind of hard to believe when you don't understand about God. But either you belong to God or you're under Satan's control, whether you know it or not. And I remember that I was shocked when I first found that out. I'm 68 years old. And I was 50 when I was spiritually born again. So I lived a lot of years not knowing God. And I'm so thankful that by God's grace, he saved me. He sent a person into my life to tell me about Jesus being the only way of salvation. Well, again, hello, welcome. Again, as I just stated, as gay people and every other person, it, you know what? It doesn't matter how good a person you are. Hello, Rocket, welcome. My name is Selma Etker. I'm a Protestant Christian missionary in the United States. And I'm answering questions this morning. And this someone is asking me about gay people. Hello, welcome. Do gay people need to repent? What I'm saying is that every single person, whether you're gay, whether you're um, an evil person, whether you are one of the best people in the whole world, if you are, if you are good and kind and loving, help people all the time, do good works, you still won't go to heaven just on your own merits. Every single person has to repent, which is to turn from your old way of living, to believe in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, to ask God forgiveness for your sins, and surrender your heart to God and choose to live by the teachings of Jesus and the apostles and the evangelists in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament. So, I, that, is, that is my main message. What do I think about Jewish people? I love the Jewish people. I love all people. But they, as well as everyone else, must turn to Jesus. The Jewish people still live by the Old Testament, the Old Testament laws. They, if they reject Jesus as their Lord and Savior, then sadly they are choosing to go to hell instead of to heaven. That's the reason that I'm on Periscope and the reason that Norman is on Periscope is to tell you about Jesus. And it, it makes us sad. It makes us really sad that people reject Jesus because we 
love everyone with the love of God, and we want you to go to heaven too. So, the Jewish people, just like everyone else, must turn to Jesus in order to go to heaven. You can't get there by obeying the Old Testament or by listening to any other false doctrines or by worshiping any other false gods or even just by being a good person. There's only one way to heaven, and that is by faith in Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Well, that is it for today. It's time for me to go, and I'm very grateful to all of you who have taken the time to listen, and I hope that you will seriously consider your eternal destiny, because it is your choice. You're welcome. God, I'm not sure if I said it in this exact way, God does not send anyone to hell. It is the choice that you make yourself. You either choose Jesus and repent, you can go to heaven. And if you reject Jesus, then you are choosing to go to hell. So, again, I thank you all for listening. I appreciate all the comments and the questions. And... I am going to get off of here for now, and I will be back tomorrow at 11 o'clock. I love you all. Bye-bye.